Hi, welcome back to Linux. Today we are going to add a virtual disk, partition the disk, format the disk, and mount the disk. Finally, we will go in and delete the disk. We'll be using Fedora 22 for this exercise. So let's go ahead and get started. Inside of VirtualBox, I'm going to right click and choose settings or you can click the settings icon after you select the machine at top. Inside of settings, we'll go down to the storage icon. Under storage, we'll see that I've got an error there. Let me remove that. Under storage, you'll see we have two controllers, IDE and SATA. Next to the SATA controller, controller you'll see add a new hard disk or add hard disk. Let's go ahead and select that. We're going to create a new disk and we will accept all of the defaults for this creation. For me, it says my disk already exists, but for you, it should have worked. So now that we have our new virtual disk created, I'm going to go ahead and power on my machine. Once the machine gets started, we'll go ahead and use FDisk to find our disk and add a partition. Okay, I'm going to log in as student, password of password, and I'll try to find that disk. Okay, we're at our desktop. So under activities, you'll see I've got termin terminal there and that little uh, favorites bar or I can go type terminal in the search field there and click on it from that search window. I clicked on it, but I think I missed it. Let me try again. There we go. Third try is a charm. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and become root as everything we will be doing will require super user or root privileges. So su-s, once again, type my password, which is password. And now I'll fdisk, nice, dash L, my drives. Fdisk stands for fixed disk, back in the days when we all had mechanical drives that were screwed into the computers. And dash L is list the attached drives. So I type that. And I can see that I've got this uh, SDA, I've got an SDB, and then I've got a couple of mappers over here which are used for the uh, Linux LVM. So I can see that dev SDB, that's the new drive I created, it's 8 gigabytes, and it does not have a partition table associated with it. So let's change that. So if we go to our, uh, our little lab here, we're going to go over and fdisk dev sdb. We're going to choose in for new. We'll choose all the default options. Then we'll change the type to C. Write the changes. After we do that, it'll pop back out and say that, well, it really won't notice your partitions until you reboot. And to avoid that, we'll just say part probe dev sdb. So let's give it a shot and see if we run into any problems. First, fdisk dev sdb. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and print the partition table. Nothing's there. Print the information. There's no partition table here. So let's go ahead and create a new partition. In, we're going to accept all the defaults. So right there, partition number one, first sector, oops, first sector, last sector, and done. Now I've done that, I can actually go in and look at what we've done. We can see the type is 83. The ID is 83. We're going to change that type, type T. Go ahead and type L there to see all the types. We're going to change it to type C. If we look over in type C, we'll see that W95, Windows 95, File Allocation Table 32. So the Windows 95 FAT 32. So we'll choose C. I'll go back and print and look at this. And we can see the options on the disk. I'm done with that now, so back over the lab here, we're going to choose W to write those changes. So W. Done. Okay, we wrote the changes. Now I'm going to type part probe, dev sdb, just to be sure that everything comes into the system okay. Going back over to the lab, we can see the next part is going to be making a file system on that partition. We're going to name our storage and we're going to use the new partition that we created. So if we look at dev sdb, this is not required, but if you want to, we can see we now have dev sdb1. So that's, that's the uh, sd is our hard drive there, that's our disk. B is the second disk, A is the first, 1 is the first partition. So we'll go through and type mkfs.vfat, which is the FAT32. We want to put a label on it, and I believe Windows, the FAT32 uses L, capital L, I think. Let me check. I've been through this, yeah, there we go, capital L storage. And then we're going to to apply this to dev sdb1. Now the reason we used sdb earlier is we were partitioning the entire disk. Now we are formatting the partition we created. So before we access the disk using sdb, now we're going to format sdb1. Should go pretty fast. Oh no, in Windows FAT32, it is an N. Not an L. There we go. Must be on a EXT systems. It's a it's a L. All right. So I went ahead. We did that. Next thing we're going to want to do is create a mount point. So I believe we're going to go to attempt to do that. So we can go over make a directory example. We can mount that to temp example. So let's go ahead and pop into our temp directory. So let's right here CD to temp. And we'll change this to in. And we're going to make that example directory and go ahead and mount that. So I'm going to cd to slash temp. Make a directory example. Now I'm going to mount dev sdb1 to example. There we go. It's now mounted. Now another option that we could type is mount dash t vfat dev sdb1 and then slash temp slash example. That's our mount point. So in this case, I'd be specifying what type it is and I would tell it what device I'm using and then what directory is my mount point. There are other options that we can include. We can include masks and users and other options, but we're not getting into that with mount. Now the three little pound signs I put there, anytime you put a pound in there, it's a comment so it doesn't do anything to your command line. This hash or pound mark, that one means that I'm root. Whenever I type one, it means ignore that. So let's go back over and look at what we're going to do. Look at our mount and then do a disk free with human readable format. So let's check our mount. Type mount. 
When we type mount, we see we have dev sdb1 on slash tmp slash example at the very bottom there. It's vfat. If I type df-h, I'll also see all the devices I have. Temp devices or dev sd1, sda1, and then dev sdb1 right there on temp example. I can list the files on temp example and we'll see that there's nothing there. If we want to create something, we could touch file whatever we want to do with it. Make seven files in there. Now if we look inside of example, we'll see those files. Now I'm going to go ahead and umount the drive. So I'll type umount slash temp slash example. Now if I look in example slash temp example, the directory is still there, but the disk is no longer mounted. So if I went back and remounted it, which I'll go ahead and use the dash T there. If I went ahead and remounted it, then you'll see my files are there. When I U-mount it, it unmounts that disk, and so nothing is left inside my example directory. That's it. That's all there is to creating a new drive in VirtualBox, signing partitions to the drive, or in this case, one partition, formatting the partition, mounting the partition to a directory and unmounting the partition. I hope that this helped.